G'day guys, in this video I'm wanting to talk about the origins of the Anglo-Saxons. So we're really starting to explore three of our primary cultures uh, of the period. So basically we're looking at through sort of the 10th century right through to the, the right through to the 12th century in, in Western Europe. So bigger cultures at this time, the big emerging cultures, uh, the Anglo-Saxons, we also have the so-called Vikings and we also have the Normans. So lots and lots and lots of uh, videos to explore what was going on and how it was all working. So we know towards the end of the, the Roman occupation, uh, everything started to collapse for the Romans around about the 410 period. We don't know exactly different specific dates, but um, we do know that uh, everything was obviously going bad for the Romans. And some of the Germanic tribes, so-called Germanic tribes, were now starting to really rise. But entering what we call the, the migration period. We'll explore the migration period in a little bit more detail in a video coming up shortly. Uh, however, what I want to focus on really is, is the origins of the, the Anglo-Saxons. So let's take a bit of a look. The Christian Church, most notably Pope Gregory I, who was the bishop in Rome, from the year 590 refers to the Anglo-Saxons as non-Angli. So he's really referring to not English, if we translate it, not English, but Angli as in Anglo. So there is definitely not only a reference to English at this time, way back before a lot of people would credit it, but also we're looking at the, the Anglo-Saxon, but Angles. So long before a lot of people would be referring to the English, we have a Pope in Rome in the year 590 who is um, referring to both English and Angles. King Athelstan refers to the Anglo-Saxons, interestingly, I think one of the first in literature to refer to the Anglo-Saxons. Let me just get a piece of paper, I've got a quote written down. And he refers to it as Rex Anglorium, which is king of the English, and English at this time was not only referring to the Anglo-Saxons, but the Danish and Norwegian and Swedish settlers that had come across, and other settlers from Europe too. The Anglo-Saxons were from different regions of what we would today refer to as Europe. So we have obviously the Frisians, we have people from Jutland, we have people from uh, the Saxon coast, and Anglia. Now, interestingly, these guys uh, d who do migrate into, uh, so we, we have essentially two things that are starting to happen at this time. So simultaneously, we have the establishment of a Saxon homeland in what is today Germany, uh, typically these days referred to as Saxony, um, but we also have the, the migration into what is today England. Now, the Anglo-Saxons established for themselves, roughly speaking, seven kingdoms. Now, there is debate around this um, because, and, and the borders frequently changed positions and, and kingdoms changed. So, we'll explore a lot of that as we go through, but, but the primary kingdoms that we're referring to are Wessex, Essex, Sussex, East Anglia, Mercia, Northumbria and Kent. Each of these different kingdoms did play a very significant role in the rise and ultimately fall of the Anglo-Saxon kingdoms. Interestingly as well, um, each of these kingdoms had their own periods of being incredibly powerful and also incredibly vulnerable. Uh, very interesting, we're going to be exploring each of these kingdoms uh, in detail. We will be exploring who some of the key personalities were of the different kingdoms and we'll get into uh, the interactions and 
and what happened with all the drama as it goes through. But there we go, guys. So that's a very basic introduction to the origins of the Anglo-Saxons. Really hope you enjoyed today's video. Please like, subscribe and share. I'll catch you in my next video.